Welcome to I Lecture Online. Now let's take a look to see how the two branches in a parallel branch. Let me start, start that over again because it didn't make any sense. All right, because you got me all thinking and different things. All right. Blame it on me. Holy moly. <laughs> I thought I'd sneak that one in. All right, try again. Welcome to I Lecture Online. Now let's take a look and see how we can calculate the current when we have a parallel branch circuit. We have a 20-volt battery that's basically pushing charges through the circuit, therefore developing a current. We have two resistors, R1 in the top branch being 6 ohms and R2 in the bottom branch being 3 ohms. Now let's think a little bit about that more in a conceptual way. We have a certain amount of current flowing through the circuit, let's call it I, and of course we know that the total current I will be equal to the voltage supplied to the circuit divided by the total resistance. And if we want to find the total resistance, we can do that using the product of the sum rule. R total equals R1, R2, multiplied together, divided by R1 plus R2. So in this case, that would be equal to 6 ohms times 3 ohms, divided by 6 ohms plus 3 ohms, which is 18 divided by 9 ohms, which is equal to 2 ohms. And from that, we can calculate the total current that will be equal to 20 volts applied divided by 2 ohms of total equivalent resistance, which is 10 amps of current. So 10 amps of current are flowing through the circuit, and now the current is dividing itself between the two branches. Now notice in the top branch, there is a 6 ohm resistor. In the bottom branch, there is a 3 ohm resistor. So, since the 6 ohm resistor is twice as big as the 3 ohm resistor, we expect only half as much current to flow in the top branch or twice as much current to flow through the bottom branch compared to the top branch. In other words, we can say that I2 must be equal to twice I1. So let's think about that a little bit. Again, we have half the resistance here compared to the resistances up there. Half the resistance means twice the current, therefore I2 must be twice I1. And I also know that the two currents added together, I1 plus I2, must add up to the total current. So we also know that I1 plus I2 must equal the total current I. And since I2 is equal to twice I1, we can say that I1 plus 2 times I1 must equal the total current I, or 3I1 must equal 10 amps, because that's what we calculated here. And then divide both sides by 3, we get I1 is equal to 10 amps, divided by 3, so I1 must be equal to 3.33 and so forth amps. And since we know that I2 is twice that amount, we can say that I2 is equal to 2 times I1, so therefore that's going to be twice 3.33, 3.33 amps, and with other words, I2, and I'm running out of room here, so let me plug it up here. There we go. So I2, therefore, is equal to 6.67 amps. And if you add I1 and I2 together, indeed, you do, you do get the 10 amps, so we got the correct values. So here, again, we want to see conceptually if there's a parallel branch, you want to figure out how much current flows through one branch and how much current flows through the other branch, just see, look at the relevant size or the relative size of the resistors. If this is half the resistance, it will get twice the current. Double the resistance, it gets half the current relative to this one. So it's easier to say that this current will be twice the current over here. So I2 will be twice I1. Together, it's a total current. And that's how you find the currents in each branch. At least one of the ways. Because in the previous video, we showed you a different way. In this video, we show you this way. In the next video, we'll show you one more method to find the current in parallel branches. And that's how it's done.